So today I'm doing something a little more simple, just a simple little oil change, oil and filter. I'm also going to be going over some uh, basic maintenance steps that you should be taking every ten, five or 10,000 miles. Uh, for me, I just do it every time I change the oil because I run full synthetic oil. So I change the oil every 10,000 miles because that's what the filter is rated for is 10,000. And I just keep a closer eye on my oil levels. But then every time I do an oil change, I check the wheel bearings, the U-joints, the belts, the anything else I can think of. Uh, grease up the bearings in the front, the ball joints and whatnot. So just a simple basic maintenance check and uh, oil and filter today. So uh, where is the oil drain? If you go underneath the front of the truck, you're going to see your skid plate from your differential. I guess if you have a four-wheel drive model. But there's the bottom of the oil pan, and you see that bolt there that's sticking out? Uh, that's the oil drain plug right there, so it's even starting to leak because I just loosened it up a little bit. But take that bolt off. Make sure your truck isn't too hot at the time, otherwise you're going to burn yourself. But otherwise, just make sure that you uh, catch the bolt and don't drop it into the oil pan. And of course, try to catch all the oil in the pan, but it should be pretty simple to take the bolt off and let everything drain out. So one thing I always like to do when I get the plug out is if you look at the tip of the plug there, that's actually a magnet. So if you rub that off and clean that off as much as possible, if you get any metal filings in there, you're probably wearing out your engine. So you should probably be changing oil sooner, but there's very minimal filings on there it's just a really really fine film there so uh, minimal engine wear for me here um, so that's a plus and like I, like I said just clean it off and get everything off of there so that this magnet can do its job for you in the future and continue collecting any metal filings that it can pick up and for the oil filter I highly recommend a filter wrench this will just stick around right in there and then you can turn it and as you see as you turn it tightens up the, the loop for you so it'll tighten around the filter and then you can turn the filter with it so I'm going to go to ch about ch taking the oil filter off to show you where that's at and how you do that alright so the filter there you see the yellow right there I got the filter wrench around it this is on the driver's side kind of right next to the oil pan this is just above the front drive shaft here for the four wheel drive models and all it is is you put the or your wrench on there and you should be able to just turn and it'll break free. So my filter was pretty darn tight on there, it didn't want to come off, so the way I ended up getting it loosened at least was by using a combination of both the filter wrench and a uh, what do I draw? channel locks pliers and between the two of those I was able to get the filter loosened up and gotten off. Um, when it comes to the new one though, uh, before you put it in you should always at least make sure to uh, wet the seal with oil, just a small film of oil, and at the same time, depending on how your filter mounts, fill it half full or all the way full with new oil so that you don't have that time where your engine's running without any oil in it when on the initial startup. And the reason I say half full or all the way full, if your filter mounts sideways like it does on these uh, Vortec engines at least, it's going to mount sideways and so if you filled that all the way full you're going to be pouring oil out and if you get like an older engine where the filter mounts uh, straight up and down like this you can fill that all the way full and you won't won't have any issues with it at all so just depends on how it mounts but for me I'm going to fill this half full so I don't have that uh, extra wear on the engine when it runs without any oil in it so alright so I got my oil filter on there and one thing that people always question is how tight do you put on an oil filter? Well, the rule of thumb is you put it hand tight and then you give it a quarter turn more past that. So, for some people that could be that actually means hand tight where you put it on by hand and then you strain a little bit and you get that extra quarter turn. That's tight enough right there. Alright, so I got my oil plug back on too, and one thing about that is though again, always make sure that you don't get that too tight, because if you get it too tight, that's just a, an aluminum housing there, aluminum bolt, so you can actually uh, strip the threads pretty easy on that, and you're going to have a bad day if you have to replace your oil pan if you strip the threads there. So, uh, yeah, so just make sure you uh, add your five quarts of oil. Uh, I'm just using the full synthetic uh, mobile one, because... Well, that's what was on sale, so uh, I like to run the full synthetic, like I said, because I can go longer between oil changes without needing to. I just have to keep a closer eye on it, so 
I pull the, every time I stop for fuel while the truck's fueling up, I just check the oil real quick, and if I need to put in a quart, I'll put in a quart, and usually I don't, but just for those times that I do, I feel better about it, just because that way I know that the engine's going to be running full on oil all the time. Alright, so I got my five quarts of oil in now, uh, should be good to go there. So while I got the truck jacked up, got it in the shop, I'm just going to do some simple maintenance checks. What I'm going to do here, it's hard to tell what I'm doing, but what I, basically, I got the tire up off the ground just a little bit, and what I'm going to do is grab it on both sides and wiggle it from, from side to side like this, and if I feel any play in it, other than like a normal steering function, uh, if there's slip between the right tire and the left tire, then I know I have a maybe a ball joint or more than likely a tie rod that's going out. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the top and the bottom of the tire, and that's going to be the ball joint pretty sure there. So uh, just so that's an easy way to check uh, if all your bearings and everything are good to go or not. And I just do that every 10,000 miles when I do an oil change, and that's held on for me pretty true. I've been able to catch anything before I have any problems on the road. So I'm going to do that. Rear wheels too. Uh, that one, the rear wheels, you don't have to go up and down and side to side. Just pick one direction and go with that, and that's just wheel bearings. Do that on either side, and then go in on the drive shaft and feel on the U joints there again in both directions, so that you know if it's the U joints going in either way. All right, so here's the start up, and what I'm going to do is watch the oil pressure. I guess there we go. You got a nice green now, but that's where the oil pressure's at. I turn the key on, it drops down to zero. So keep an eye on that when it starts. It's going to start off and it's going to stay low for a little bit while longer. But once I get it started up, then it'll bring the pressure right back up. There we go. Yep, so brought our pressure right back up to where it should be. So once it gets warmed up, it should bring that back down to right at I'm hoping at right around 30 so uh, should be good to go now uh, we got pressure and everything seems to be good I'm just going to double check the oil on the dipstick and make sure I'm not leaking again but this project is done